and you are live. Um, good evening. I'm calling to order the Wednesday, July 21st Community Services and Personnel Committee. Uh, uh, roll call tonight. We have Tom Keegan, myself, Barbara Smith, Greg Burnett. Uh, we have Dominique Johnson, Diana Revolus, um, as members of the committee, as well as David Fugelman has joined us as well tonight. Um, first item on the agenda, public comments. Is there anyone who is here who would like to speak? We currently have no public attendees. Okay. All right, uh, moving on. Next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes from the meeting held on June 16th, 2021. Do I have a motion? So move. Thank you, Mr. Burnett moves the minutes. Are there any uh, deletions, changes, um, comments on the minutes? I did have, uh, Madam Chair, I did have one uh, minor typographical item on the bottom of page four of the minutes. Um, the uh, last paragraph where it says the uh, Oster said she reviews all of the licensing materials and does drop in visits to both sites. I think that's supposed to be when W H E N the programs are running. So that was the only update Thank I had. You. Good catch. Anything else? Okay, all in favor of approving the minutes as, as amended? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, uh, minutes are approved unanimously. Uh, moving on next to a personnel item, approval of the adjustment to the ordinance employee pay plan schedule. Um, we have uh, Mr. Bernie here to uh, to talk about this, but the uh, the ordinance pay plan, um, as you are aware, um, is you know we we are we we revisit this uh, annually. Um, just a little bit of background, and I think you know Ray, you can go into this a little further. Um, last year, we brought up um, some employees who were dramatically underpaid in terms of their counterparts in the union. We brought our elected officials up to an annual uh, pay increase as opposed to uh, during the ele election cycle um, every other year. So um, this is just the annual increase. And so Ray, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that over to you. I think you summarized most of it, uh, Chairperson Smith. Um, this is a request for this committee and then the Common Council to approve the general wage adjustment for the ordinance employees uh, since last July 1st, the unionized workforce has received two increases on January 1st and July 1st of this year, equaling about 2.35%. Uh, so this is the request for this committee and the full uh, common council to approve the concurrent adjustment to the ordinance wage scale of 2.35%. Um, any questions? Yes, Mr. Burnett. Thank you, Madam Chair. I get uh, the one question I have is when you say the 2.5, is that across the board regardless of the effective date that's indicated in the chart? The 2.35% wage adjustment would go into place effective July 1st, so retroactive for about three weeks uh, for everyone. Oh, so regardless of their effective date. That's correct. Did you have another question, Mr. Burnett? No. Okay, Ms. Johnson. Thank you, Chair, uh, and thank you, Mr. Bernie. Just, um, just to confirm, so we see some vacant uh, positions here, and are those going to be filled? Is, is this 
adjustment affect them as well? Like when they're hired, they'll receive the adjustment? Uh, on the sheet that you're looking at the vacant positions, uh, this is a year old list. Those positions I do not think we're gonna be filled. And what happens is the entire wage scale gets adjusted just like the unionized workforce wage scale got adjusted, the entire wage scale would go up 2.35% for each of those uh, wage scales. And depending upon when the person was hired, they'd be hired at the rate in effect that day uh, when they get hired. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Keegan, oh. Yeah, hi, Madam Chair. Uh, <laughs> I have a, a Ray. Is is there are there any performance evaluations? Um, the performance evaluations for this most of the employees on this group are uh, historically tied to the bonus pool, which uh, is not in front of you today. The performance evaluations were sent out to all of these employees uh, around July first. Uh, and I ask for them to return them to me uh, by the end of the month. That may or may not happen. Uh, uh, but uh, the performance evaluations for most of the employees on this list uh, are out and are due back sometime in the next 30 days or so. But the, the, the request today is for general wage adjustment, not tied to performance evaluations. Uh, we have typically only talked about uh, performance evaluations tied into the bonus pool. Any other questions? Um, just, oh, oh, go ahead, Mr. Burnett. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I just, I just noticed that the, this list that we're looking at was updated 9-15-2020, and I still see Nick Roberts on the list. Um, is this the most current, the most accurate? Is, I mean, is there anything, are these numbers the most accurate that we're looking at? This list was sent to you to show you what positions are on the list of ordinance positions. The uh, salary ranges are the ranges that were uh, approved uh, and in effect last July 1st, the last time we made this request. So yes, the, the salary ranges are correct. The list is last year's list. All the positions are the same. There may be one or two people who have changed. Once the Common Council approves the adjustments, we will go in and correct all of the uh, wage adjustments and any if there's any new names in there. Any other questions or concerns? Um, also, um, uh, I would just like to note that uh, Mr. Saccinelli has joined us at 710. Um, okay, uh, so yeah, I was just gonna say, you know, one additional thing, I, and, and I did say this um, as I introduced it, I, you know, I think that um, it was, it's important that we um, monitor the ordinance pay versus the, um, the union pay and make sure that we have equity. So, um, you know, that is one of the most important things that we're doing here is making sure that that happens and that there is a fair wage increase. Um, and so, I, you know, I think it's worth uh, continuing to monitor this and revisit it as needed. So, um, so having said that, I'll go ahead and call for a vote. All in favor? And indicate by raising your hand. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Okay, Nick, I didn't see your vote. Sorry, because you went from. from oh, okay, all right. Uh, voted okay. I. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay. Great. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, moving on to item five: discussion of community services. So uh, Lamond is going to give us a general update at this time. So go ahead. Mr. Thank Dan. you, uh, and good evening, Madam Chair, and to committee members, council members. Um, just a few things I just wanted to share both to you all to keep you updated, and also to Noah Walkers that who may be reviewing this either live today 
or once we archive it on our, our social media assets. Um, we're really excited once again through the leadership of, of the Norwalk Public Schools Food Service that uh, we will continue to provide the free summer meals for all children. We've also, uh, for those that are listening, you can find it definitely on the Norwalk Public Schools website, but you also can find it on the City of Norwalk website. And this is a federally funded program that free meals throughout the entire summer, excuse me, throughout the entire summer uh, up to August 30th, 2021. Our goal is that any Norwalk youngster, any Norwalk child between the, eight, uh, between the ages of two and 18 can go to a, a neighborhood school and receive a breakfast meal and a lunch meal and then meals for the weekend. So this is a, a, a program that we wanna to continue to promote. Um, I'll also send it out to the committee that if you also have social media to share within your district, we're located at a variety of schools, Ben Franklin Community Center, Brian McMahon High School, uh, Columbus Magnet, Jefferson Elementary School, Kendall Elementary School, Marvin Elementary School, Nathan Hale, uh, Opponents Ridge, Tracy Magnet, and West Rock. And so the question is why these schools and why these communities? One of the things that uh, through my department is now we're using data. So we were able to provide data to the school district to really identify where are the needs, uh, specifically looking at the free and reduced data, looking at income data, and those that would qualify and eligible for food. And so, um, we continue to promote this, uh, so I wanted to share that program. And also uh, families and individuals with children that come also want to remind our no walkers, no questions will be asked. Um, people are concerned that if I'm undocumented or my status, if you have a child and your child needs food, you just let those that are at every site, as Kevin would say, how many children and we will provide the food to you. And we're really excited. This is any Norwalk uh, child. You do not have to be a student in the public school system as long as your child is between the ages of two and 18. And we will take your word that your child is between two and 18 and we'll give you the food uh, to help your child. Because again, our goal is not any Norwalk child during the summer to go without food. Secondly, uh, Madam Chair, I just wanted to share, we continue our Family Navigator Program, which is funded by the Dahlia Foundation, the Parent Hydra Foundation, and the Kate, in the, not the Kate, Kate Ritter is our contact person, the, uh, the Ritter Family Foundation. And we continue to serve Norwalk residents, uh, residents who, if you have children and just need help around navigating, how do I get help for my child? What are the services and resources? The Family Navigation Program is still serving our Norwalk residents. We're able to continue throughout the whole summer into the fall. And if a Norwalk resident is listening, please call 203-854-7255. And we're so excited to have Spanish, Haitian, Creole, and other languages upon request to serve our constituents who, where English may not be their dominant language. And then finally, uh, Madam Chair, well, two more things. Uh, we continue to offer the uh, food program at Veterans Park every single Wednesday from 8.30 to 11.30. However, August 25th, which is the last Wednesday in August, this program will discontinue. So we are urging Norwalk residents to look on the city's website via the health department. We are listing all the food pantries because many of our Norwalk residents relied every Wednesday to go to Veterans Park and during the winter season, we're at Cap Pasture Park. Uh, beach. However, this was a program funded by Connecticut Food Bank and Food Source from an anonymous donor in Fairfield County. While we are so uh, pleased of the services that we've been able to offer on average, well, we're, we're still at 800 to 1,000 cars driving through uh, the beach. However, this was a, a funded program and the resources are no longer here. However, we want to continue to inform our residents that if they are in need of food, they can rely on the variety of local pantries throughout the city. And that information also lives on the city's website. And if you are driving through, we're actually giving out flyers periodically to residents so that they know where they can go, who to count on beyond the Wednesday uh, food program. And then this, and now the last thing, I also just want to, uh, we made a commitment uh, to Norwalk residents to keep uh, you know, our community form with the equity and justice work. In fact, tonight, uh, the District E is hosting a conversation. So 
So I wanted to say this to our residents that um, this is tough work. It's not easy. And one of the challenges we really do want to hear from you because I am hearing people are saying, does my voice matter? Oh, give us an opportunity. Um, we think we have a good consulting firm to help us. I know that they, have, they are meeting in different groups, but we're also relying on you to engage. Uh, that we've done a, a Spanish speaking senior group. We're, working, we're doing District E. We've hosted a couple of meetings at the library, but we know we need to do more. We're a city almost reaching 90,000, and we want to get a really good uh, representation of the views of Norwalk. Those that would automatically want to be engaged, but also those that have not traditionally been involved. And that's the goal is to really capture and, 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 and you know, connect with folks that normally won't be engaged. So um, I want to give my email address, uh, which is L Daniels at NorwalkCT.org. I'm really encouraging those, and some people have already, but I want to continue to promote uh, my email that please reach out to my office. We can help you get engaged. We do get people saying, how can I learn more about it? And then my office then shares that information. But we made a commitment. We're almost in the five-month range, so we are looking to have led by us to a town hall and share with the community what we're doing so our entire community can be engaged. So that is up and coming, but we need your voice. We need your participation. This process is only as good as people being engaged. And we're working with the Led By Us team and other partners such as Norwalk Acts, the Fairfield County Community Foundation to lend some expertise of how do you get into the community. And we are meeting with other organizations, some of our larger organization institutions to see if they can host meetings. Because we're finding that um, if people know other people, they tend to show up. So we're, we recognize that uh, this strategy around engaging uh, is, is challenging, but we're committed to think through any strategy or any idea so that we can get a good representation. So when we're all talking about what do, how Norwalks feel about living in Norwalk, it's really a, a popular, uh, it's really a good representation of all perspective as opposed to a, a specific group. So I just want to just share that with, with both of you, the committee and, and our residents that uh, we need your help. Uh, we're working on our strategy. We're working, uh, Fairfield County Community Foundation will be helping us think through or helping led by us. How do we communicate it more effectively? There are community events that uh, they are taking advantage of. So if you know a community event to say, I want them at my event, we can make that happen. Um, and then, but it's, we're still forming and still uh, getting to where we need to go. I also want to continue to promote the commission is not established. This, that's the outcome of the process. It's within this process that they'll be recommending, you know, a structure and, and, and process for the commission, but that's, that's still being formed. We're also providing research for us around other models across the state so we can look at best practices so that when we do make a commitment to think about what would our commission look like, we can really learn from our colleagues across the country to learn what worked and didn't work. And then the last, I think I said that already, uh, there's one, one more thing. Uh, we just want to remind um, Noah Walkers that we continue to be at Calf Pasture for vaccines, and we're actually be promoting vaccine sites at the, at the, uh, at the feeding program, at the food sites. Uh, we recognize that we got to get into the community. We got to meet people where they are. And so we're really excited to partner with uh, the Community Health Center, Community Health Community Health Center Inc. on Day Street and the Norwalk Community Health Center. They are our partners. They're bringing the mobile, uh, um, the mobile coach bus out. Uh, we we're grateful for the uh, the library under Sherelle's uh, leadership. We're hosting pop up clinics at the library in the parking lot, both at Main Street and and South Norwalk. We want to continue to to encourage Norwalkers to get vaccinated because it's important that uh, people get vaccinated and we're, we'll, we hopefully will be in a neighborhood near you so that any barrier to get to places will meet you where you are and we continue to work with organizations across the city to promote the vaccine and our vaccine mobile sites and our vaccine vans at Carver and so forth. And so we're continue to uh, get the word out and encouraging those that have selected to get vaccine. Uh, uh, if you go to our website, you'll also see that on our website. And um, that's my update for you all this evening, Madam Chair, to turn it back to you. Um, thank you, Lamont. Um, just uh, let the record show that Kadeem Roberts joined us at 7.13.
Um, and if I uh, may turn it over to um, anyone for questions, Roman. Okay, thank you very much for that update. Um, Let's move on to our action items. Uh, 6A, authorize the mayor, Harry W. Willing, to ex execute any and all documents necessary to apply for and accept an American Rescue Plan grant in the amount of $21,459 for the benefit of the Norwalk Public Library. Do I have a motion, please? Ms. Johnson? Okay. Okay, Ms. Johnson moves it. Um, and uh, we have Sherelle Harris here from the Nora Public Library with some, um, you know, you've got some really, um, actually kind of exciting items on this list that you intend to use for, uh, use these this funding for. So, um, on. Go, let's, I know. <laughs> you did it. it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. So, uh, so Sherelle, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Madam Chair, if, if I may do this brief intro, I, um, I, I think this is the first time that Sherelle Harris has uh, come before this committee. So, and I also would like to, to this committee, congratulate her as being the, uh, the library director for the Norwell Public Library. As you all know, the library is part of the community services department. And so we're really excited to have Sherelle a part of the team. Uh, she's coming with a lot of, not only just her experience, but just a lot of ideas and and vision and innovation of how we look at the library, not just as a place to get books, but a place that people can call home, a place that people can call a resource center, and we're really partnering together. A uh, case in point, as I mentioned, um, get a book, get a vaccine, get a book. Uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, some food uh, too. Get some food too. And so <laughs> I, I just want to just acknowledge the vision that she is laying out in terms of really looking at the library as a community hub, as, as really a, a, a anchor uh, in the city. And those are just best practices that are happening all across the country. How can we use the library as that place to go, as that place to be? We're also working with her that I know um, has come up in our discussions when I presented to you all in terms of the, the variety of services. And we're also working with Sherelle and the team that, um, you know, to, to, for some services, people may not feel comfortable coming into a city hall or government building. Well, Sherelle has even offered space, even within the library, and they're located in really good places at Maine and South Norwalk that residents can uh, meet for services in the library. She's dedicated space to the community services department so that if, if residents are uncomfortable walking in government buildings, we can say, guess what? We'll meet you at the library and we can serve you there as well. So I just wanted to just share uh, some of some remarks around her leadership and we're looking forward to doing some great things and, and just how do we serve our constituents better in the libraries at the helm helping us think through that. So thank you, Madam Chair and Sherelle. We're so excited for what you're mm -hmm. doing and we, we like when there are grants. <laughs> <laughs> you said don't leave any money on the table. So and, and I have said that that's been my directive. <laughs> thank you, sure. Madam Chair. And hello, Madam Chair. Thank you, Lamont, and hello to the council. I feel like I'm among friends here. Um, so really excited. This is uh, my first grant as uh, the director of the library. And so, you know, some of it, um, some of the things we asked for is centered around COVID. Um, we don't know how long, we have a COVID fund now. We don't know how long um, the city will pay for COVID related items. Um, so one of the items are PPE, it looks like masks are here to stay. Um, one good thing that we did learn um, is even, you know, just if people are sick or have a cough that we should, you know, have masks, something we didn't do prior to COVID. So um, we ordered PPE. Um, the other thing is to have hygienic chairs, um, not to sit on the, the cushion chairs. You don't know what's left there, whether it's a child or anything. So just to have chairs that we can quickly clean, spot clean, um, and, and deep clean. So, um, and then just to have consistency, we have different types of chairs all over the library. So aesthetically, it will be great to have, you know, consistency among our chairs, as well as, you know, to be able to clean them. A um, Couple of things we're really excited about is the soundproof um, acoustic pod. Um, one of the things Norwalkers really want are those meeting rooms. 
Um, so the pods are really nice because they can be used for telehealth. If someone has a telehealth um, appointment, they can also be used just if somebody just needs private, um, a private office. So they're soundproof, they won't disturb um, anyone else. When we had the cafe put in, we lost a meeting room. So, you know, this will be great, something, you know, pretty chic. Um, so we're pretty excited. The other thing is, um, so our library is an outdoor and indoor library. So we have seating outside. We have um, free book giveaways. People sit out, they talk, um, they read books. They, um, you know, may do homework outside. Um, so outdoor solar um, charging station. And I'm gonna give a shout out to Diane Lorcello who's always talking about solar energy. And I know the city, Alan Lowe and everyone has been working any project that comes up, people are considering solar. So this is our contribution um, to have a solar outdoor charging station. Um, so that's, um, that's pretty much it for our grant. Um, Cheryl, I have a question. How many of the solar charging stations? I, that wasn't clear in the backup. I, it, so it's one. Just one. You know, we like to see how it works, you know, Got first. It. And then, you know, maybe we'll get another grant or maybe okay. the city might uh, pay for another one at Sono. Yeah, that's great. Um, questions? Mr. Keegan? You're on mute. I, at some point before my term ends, I'm going to stop being on mute, I hope. <laughs> Sherelle, it's good. Sherelle, it's good to see you. I mean, we go way back to the PTOC days, but in any yes. event, um, I'm going to defer to, you know, some some of uh, our council members that may be a little more savvy with um, technological things. But how well do those charging stations usually hold up? Well, we'll find out. Yeah, um, yeah, I, that's, that's yeah, one I, of the I, only issues that I. Yeah. So it has um, a three year warranty. Um, oh. Yeah. And so. Um, the company, you know, when I ask them, uh, like when we install, if anything's wrong, we have, I think it's three months, you know, a window, like if anything goes wrong to return it or to get other items. Um, but they seem to be a very, very ethical company. And so, but you know, we'll find out. We're yeah, to solar. Just totally curious. I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Yeah, I am so excited and yeah. Any other questions, comments? Mr. Burnett? I'll lower my hand. Um, the, uh, uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, a couple of questions related to the pods, which are a super great idea. Are those made offsite um, and, and brought on site as one complete unit? So you, you don't have to do construction, you just have to find a place to put them? No, there will be some construction inside, not a lot, but some construction. Because as so, it is, it wouldn't fit, it wouldn't um, totally fit through our doors. But just, uh, there will be some minor construction. Okay, okay. Um, uh, two more questions. Um, what, I, I wasn't quite clear on how many we were getting and the, and the cost. So, um, Let's see, so we are getting one. It's always good to start off with one if it's something you're not quite familiar with. Um, so the cost for the pod, um, 8,000. 8,000 for one, 8,000. And that includes, yeah, so we'll, we'll have, you know, the, the electrical outlets, there's a table, and then there's um, like seating as well. So my final question is, how can we get, what do we have to do to get more? Um, so, I, I, yeah. I, would, I think these, this is a great idea to have these um, soundproof rooms for several purposes. Um, I, I think we will outlive the usefulness of one. So mm -hmm. we should start planning to get more. So, what do we need to do to do that? 
So this one is a hit. Um, the count will come back to you for more if we can't get it through another grant. So we, we've already identified um, another place at Maine and um, we definitely wanna make sure we can get one at Sono, but Sono is so much smaller. So we just have to find um, you know, a space for it because the need is definitely here, particularly people who just want, if they're entrepreneurs who are working at home and just wanna get out, this will be great. They're not disturbing anyone because you know we won't hear their telephone conversations. So um, we're already eyeing two more. Excellent, excellent. I know uh, I'm, I'm, you know, familiar with um, the what people might call renter office space. For example, WeWork um, has very several locations across the Connecticut, New York area, and these private pods are a huge hit mm -hmm. with the um, the community, you know, the working community in terms of being able to have private meetings to take private calls, et cetera. So mm -hmm. um, I, I will definitely be a supporter of mm -hmm. trying to get additional funding for more of these pods, because I think they will be a great enhancement to the library. I think so, thank you. And I'd like to give a shout out to Luis Ayala, who's one of our reference librarians who um, did the lion's share you know, of research and, and help. So shout out to Luis. And Councilman, if I may, I think what, what this grant, well, under Sherelle's leadership, you know, this grant allows Sherelle's team to be creative and innovative. And um, before we may, if we need to come before council or find or identify additional funding, at least this grant will allow us to say, does it fit? Are we getting good feedback? <laughs> does it really make sense? I mean, I think we kind of know the answers. But um, when Sherelle said, hey, I think there's a grant, you know, we were like, let's go for it and let, and, and let the grant pilot this. And then if we think that this is something, then we'll look at, you know, how do we, what is the strategy to expand? And to your point, um, if we get four more, maybe that's the construction piece or modifying the building. But at this point, it's really around the, the grant allowed us to, to be creative with Sherelle and, and try out some new uh, equipment that um, that we're just not familiar with. And I think we're going to learn a lot. And to your point, I think people are going to say, we want to see more of those. But first time out the gate, we wanted to be modest. It kind of just, what is this all about? So mm -hmm. we're really excited to uh, with this grant that Sherelle submitted to, uh, to, so she can start thinking about re reimagining what the library can become in the, in the future, uh, quite frankly. Yeah, I just, you know, Cheryl, this is really great thinking on your part. I think that these, this is really appropriate and forward thinking uh, use of, of ARP funding. Um, it's exactly what it's meant for. I mean, even just the, the you know, the, the soundproof uh, pod, I mean, even the idea of, you, you know, residents being able to use that for a telehealth appointment uh, mm -hmm. when they are not able to do it at home. I mean, that's really, you know, just great thinking. So, uh, so well done. Um, Thank you. Team effort, fun. I have to say, yeah. definitely a team effort, so. Um, uh, Ms. Revolus, you have a question? Question, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. okay. Hi, Diana. Um, hi, Ms. Harris. So, you know, I first of all just wanted to say you are an affiliate um, representation of District B, your affiliate representation mm -hmm. of the heart of Norwalk. Um, you. And you already know that you are like my shining star when it comes to all this. <laughs> that I have to said, live up to that now. <laughs> you already have. You already have. Um, that being said, um, not only because I just remember growing up in Stanford with the Ferguson Library, those private pods actually make the library become home to students. When it becomes um, with teaching or with the studies getting getting together, study groups, so on. It made Ferguson Library a staple for the students there. And it's also gonna bring that back, of course, you know, and, and again, I love us thinking forwardly, you know, sometimes we have to reinvent the wheel and think innovatively, and I love that. Um, but I just really love that, the fact that um, that brings it back to becoming a staple for students um, in their community, that little quiet, safe spot um, you don't know how 
well, you do know because you got it, but you don't know how big and how influential it is, especially for high school or middle school age students mm -hmm. to um, make um, the library become a place of solace and solitude, um, a, a, run, a runaway spot in a sense, for the lack of better words. <laughs> um, you know, that little cubby hole in the wall of Ferguson was a big deal in my life. Um, it's also a great way to get used to the smell of books again. So I just appreciate your thought of it. I appreciate having you in Norwalk and I definitely love having you for District B. So <laughs> that's all I wanted to say, but thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. I love that sensory comment there, the smell of books. It's great. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, right? I, I love the smell <laughs> of books, oh my God. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Mr. Hoobelin. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, Sherelle, this is, th this is great stuff. I mean, and fantastic. And I, I, I echo in everything that's being said. I, I love the innovation. Um, is there infrastructure that you need to, uh, deal with for the, for the pods? And I'm assuming that they're, they have their own environmental control is, is there is, uh, but are they plug and play? Is it something that you plug into an outlet or do you have to rewire things or, uh, put in, uh, uh, technology, internet, or anything like that? So it comes, we don't have to do anything externally, just internally. Um, so we have the option to order the outlets as well, which we will. Very cool. Thank you. I just, I think it's really exciting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Okay, seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Carries unanimously. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, next item on the agenda, also yours. Uh, <laughs> Authorize the mayor, Harry W. Reeling, to execute a contract amendment with the Blue Teapot LLC, extending the term of the license agreement for cafe food services at the library through September 6, 2022. Uh, do I have a motion? Okay, so. Oh, sorry, we just had oh, another moves the item and um, and go ahead, Cheryl. I know we're just we're extending the contract is what we're doing. So um. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to speak out of turn. Oh, okay. So um, the library um, conducted a survey a few years back, and a cafe was number one on the list. So we um, I think we opened September seventh, twenty nineteen. Then we had COVID. Um, so, you know, she had to shut down, um, you know, after investing quite a bit of money to build. So this contract basically is extended for two years rather than the one year. And um, the one difference in this contract and the previous is now she will also offer catering services as well. So um, we just thought it was a fantastic idea. She's just a phenomenal cook anyway, or, you know, she's a um, great baker. And so, um, so if we have programs, just say if um, the Common Council wants to have a meeting at the library, if you get it catered, I don't know if you get it catered, but you can, you can have an, you know, she can cater your program or if anyone, like we have um, condo associations and different people. So she will offer catering as well. Okay, uh, questions? Ms. Johnson? I just want to say I'm so happy to see the blue teapot get extended, come back again. That was my spot before, <laughs> before the, the shutdown. Um, wow, it was such a wonderful thing for the library, for the city. It was so good to have my cup of tea while I had my meeting or I got my book. Um, and I'm just so happy with the response to it as well. I think I'm, I know I'm not the only one in the community that just loved it. So um, exciting too. There's more opportunities for the the blue teapot to expand for catering. That's, that's a really excellent um, possibility. So thank you very much, Cheryl. Uh, Mr. Fernando, yeah, go ahead, Mr. Burnett. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I, I just wanted, was looking at a point of clarification because the, um, the motion says through 2022, however, the wording in the new contract says the license agreement is extended through September 6, 2023. So I just was trying to get clarification on that. 
so so originally it was 2021. Um, our board chair, uh, Mr. Knopp, thought that, you know, with all of the, with the situation with COVID um, and her having to shut down, that it would be a nice gesture to offer her a two-year contract rather than a one-year contract. So I think the question, though, is, uh, is in, and I noticed that, too, um, actually, the 2023 in the actual uh, contract, but yet on the, um, on the agenda, it's 2022. So are we extending it? So which one is 2023? To 2023, all right. Correct. So we need to um, amend the um, the so, uh, actual the so date. Should the, right, yeah, so that's why I was asking the question. So should the motion that's going to come before the full council read extending it through September 6, 2023, or should it say 2022? 2023. Okay, so um, so I need um, a motion to amend the wording of the um, item. Uh, Ms. Revolus makes the motion to change 2022 to 2023. All in favor of amending um, the wording, the date, signify by raising your hand. Uh, opposed, abstentions. Okay, that motion carries to amend to the date to 2023. And so uh, any further questions before I call for a vote? Go ahead, Ms. Revolus. Just being a person who's actually contracted with the library, with, if he does do catering, is it like an option then that they would just like a, a, a person would select? Like how would that catering, for example, you know, Hack has worked with the library. We did an event, but is it something like we just select, we would like catering, and then it would be like an additional add-on type of thing? Correct. So you can, okay. that will be one of the options, um, one of our meeting room options. And so you would prearrange her number and everything will be there and you will prearrange the catering with her. Okay. All right. And, and we have- um, With this, Neoli. I'm sorry, Neoli Potts. And she has, and not to be extra, but do we have, um, do we cater to people like with food variations, like that don't eat meat or stuff like that? I know it doesn't matter, just wondering. Yeah, you can work that out with her. With her, she does have those options though? Yeah, I, I don't okay, know. You would, yeah. Oh. So I know she will offer like sandwiches, um, desserts, coffee, soda, and things like that. I was wondering so, like that gluten or dairy or non, all that. You know, you, you know what, she's a great dietitian. She's great with healthy things, even like the sugar. So I'm sure she would have those options, but those are all things that, you know, would be prearranged with her. Awesome, that's my only question. Also cool, but that was it. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, I'll call for a vote now. All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed? Abstentions. All right, motion carries. Blue T. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thanks very much, Sherelle. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Us. Um, all right. Uh, moving on to item six A. Authorize the mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to accept Department of Children and Families grant funds in the amount of fifty five thousand thirty three dollars and an additional $12,891 in enhancement funds to support the operation of the Norwalk Youth Services Department and its programs, restorative justice, care coordination, peer connection, as the designated Youth Services Bureau for the city of Norwalk. Application submission deadline is September 1, 2021. Grant award period is July 1, 2021 through June 30th, 2023. Award amount in the 2023 fiscal year may be adjusted slightly from the 2022 fiscal year per DCF funding guidelines. Do I have a motion? Move that. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Sacinelli moves the item. Um, and this is, uh, this is a recurring grant that uh, the city receives from DCF. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that over to Lamond and David. Yep. Um, David, take awesome. it away, um, as you all know, um, David leads our Youth Services Bureau and our Youth Services Department. He's here to speak on funding that receive uh, that they administer and serve our youth throughout the city. So I'll turn it over to David. 
Yeah, we, we've had this grant for, for I don't want to say forever, but since the beginning when the state first statutorily defined youth service bureaus and provided funding for them. So it's a non-competitive grant. Um, the money's allocated. If you don't apply for it, you don't get it. Um, but we've applied for it every <coughs> every year. One of the things DCF did do this year, which they used to not do, is they combine the enhancement portion into the regular grant funding. Typically, the enhancement portion is more program directed. So the enhancement portion that we're getting, we're using to fund our peer connection program, which we've had for many years. It's a middle school uh, aged program that's a youth development type program. It's activity based. And then the other thing I want to use some of the money for out of the enhancement funds is we've recently brought on, uh, nor, uh, I believe he's Norwalk High School student, maybe he's McMahon, I'm getting confused, but uh, he's actually a great kid and he's working with us in revamping our website. And I know he's also going to do not just our department, but also the human services and community services websites he's going to do some tweaks to. So we're bringing him on as sort of a website manager intern. Um, and we're going to use some of that. We're, he's currently working with us now through summer youth employment. That's only a six uh, week period, but we want to keep him on through the year to manage the website, make upgrades, to keep it up to date. And then hopefully if this activity continues, you know, bring maybe another student on that <clears throat> he can, um, sort of train on the work he's done and we can sort of keep that going. And it's great to have uh, youth directly involved in the man management of our website. We've given them uh, quite a bit of, of license and sort of artistically developing. Of course, we're gonna review it and probably make some uh, adjustments to that. So that's really where the funding is directed. The other, the main grant really just subsidizes the operations of the department. Um, if we didn't have that money and the city wanted to maintain the functions, they'd have to kick in an extra fifty-five thousand thirty-three dollars. So it, it acts as a subsidy. Um, thanks, David. Are you are you sh shifting the way you use these funds? Um, yeah, the only shift is COVID, like you know some of the th the changes that you've seen uh, with kids and the way they need to be um, allocated. Well, we, you know, we have made some shifts in the operations of the department. We're no longer doing direct service counseling. We've replaced that with care coordination. So <clears throat> when youth and families come in, uh, they do get a behavioral health assessment and then they're connected up with providers in the communities within the community, or they may be connected in, uh, if they have social service needs that are identified, they might be connected internally to the family navigation program or the community resource specialists, depending on um, the needs of the family. So we're really capturing not just whatever behavioral health needs they might have, but, but any other needs, housing insecurity, food insecurity, athletic programs where, you know, we're trying to partner more with parks and recreation. Um, and so, you know, as Lamont likes to say, it's one-stop shopping, all things youth. Um, so in terms of COVID, you know, we were during most of COVID, we were operating, but we pretty much went remote on everything. Since the be uh, mid May, we're all back in the offices. We're mostly uh, well. Some of our operations are remote. They've continued to do the juvenile review board hearings remotely, uh, and I'm not sure we may go back to a hybrid model. I mean, one of the advantages of remote is we have people on that panel coming from different parts of the county. We have people coming down from Bridgeport who are part of um, the juvenile court system, and and um, so actually remote has in some ways worked better. We have families with transportation issues and if they can attend a hearing remotely, that works better for them. So I imagine over the year, um, we may do a hybrid where we do some of it remote and go back to doing some of it in person. And that's the same thing with our care coordination. We've been doing some remote, some in person. We're really offering that flexibility to the families that they would rather do it remotely, we will. If they want to come in, they can come in and see somebody live. Um, so that's been the primary impact of COVID with us. It's just the remote versus in-person. Um, any other questions? All right, seeing none, I will call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? 
abstentions, and the motion carries unanimously. So, thank you thank very you. much. Uh, okay. So, uh, any final thoughts or? All right. Where's that motion, <laughs> Ms. Revolus? <laughs> motion to adjourn. <laughs> All in favor. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Have a good night, uh, everyone. Good. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Thank you for Bye. coming. Tonight. Thank you, Bye. David. Thank you, Sherelle. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, Sherelle. Bye. Bye. Bye.